Hi there YouTubers and 3D Studio Max lovers, welcome to my 3D Corner. In today's episode we're going to discuss about how to create a 3D model or a 3D interior, half interior, half exterior in this case, from an image. So we're gonna talk about how to create this space that you see here, so how to create the materials. Not everything is going to be exactly like here, but we're gonna. I'm gonna try to use the same colors and the same patterns and uh, the bump, the stone, the water to create some water and uh, of course the sky. So if you guys are ready, let's dive in. So th this space was made by uh, Ramon uh, Esteve Architecture. So it's an architect from uh, Spain who's doing a uh, really nice uh, project. I really like his minimalistic uh, style. And the project that we're gonna work on is this place, which is called House in uh, La Cañada. Uh, yeah, it's uh, just a, an amazing house that you're going to see here. Uh, you were gonna use the images from his website, so if you need any of these images, you just need to go to his website and download the image from here. I'm also gonna leave this link in the, the below description, so you can just go directly there. So as you can see, this is the space that we're talking about. This is the one side that we we can see, and this is the other side of the space. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna create, uh, of course, also this side of the space, even though we're not going to see it because it's gonna influence how the light is gonna work uh, in the space. So yeah, as you can see, this is a very beautiful house. Let's start. So first of all, the first thing that we're going to do, I'm gonna use this image that I just downloaded from his website and I'm going to open this in Photoshop. So as you can see, I have my image here. So what I'm trying to see now, it's exactly how, what's the height of my camera in the room. I'm not gonna know exactly the number, so it's not gonna be 1.8 meters or 1.6 or whatever, but just need to know exactly the where the horizon line is. And to find out all of that, I'm gonna take uh, the line from here and I'm just gonna create I'm gonna use the red field just to, for me to see it better and I'm just gonna go with one line like this I can even make it a little bit a little bit more thicker so I can see it okay this is the first line now I'm gonna do a second one I'm gonna follow this Okay, then I'm gonna do another one in here, which it should go in the same place. So now I know that my horizon line is somewhere around here. So this means that the height, so this means that from here to here. this is my height so height camera so what i'm gonna do next is to get my other line and make here my horizon line I'm just gonna make it two maybe three pixels uh, just for me to see it better so now we have the height of the camera which we don't know exactly how big it is but uh, yeah we can guess so right now from what is from what i see this is almost half the height uh, of this door. So this is almost half. So this means that the height is around 1.5 meters. So I have another 1.5 meters or it's less. So, or it's a, a door of 2.5 meters and what, this is 1.25. I don't know exactly, but uh, we're, yeah, we're just gonna make this uh, 3D. So what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna save this picture and I'm gonna call this horizon line save it as a jpeg okay okay so i just uh, opened 3d studio max here now we're gonna load our image into our background so let's see how we can do that so first of all we need to check the dimensions of our image so i'm gonna go image image size and see that we have 920 or uh, 1920 by 1402 okay so i'm just gonna go here in f10 and uh, go to custom 
and I'm gonna put here 1920 by 1402 and I'm gonna lock this for now and I'm gonna close this for now and now I'm just gonna load my image into the background. If you, I'm gonna use uh, use file, match the viewport, I'm gonna load the image that I just saved earlier with the horizon line, apply to the active view, and I'm gonna hit okay. Okay, so this is my uh, view, and uh, as you can see, the grid is showing me that it's not matching the image behind. So how we're gonna do that? For now, I'm just gonna save this, save as, save, and now I'm just gonna go to perspective match. I'm just gonna go to utilities, perspective match, and I'm gonna push the button with show vanishing lines. The moment that I did that, the program is showing me the vanishing lines of the grid that I have here in the background. So what I need to do now, I need to match these lines, the red ones, the green ones, and the blue ones with the lines from my image. So how is that going to work? So the first ones that we need to match are the red ones. So the red ones are the the OX axis, the green ones are the OY, and the blue ones are the OZ. So I need to match all these lines with the ones from my perspective. So as you can see, in the moment that I'm uh, orbiting my space, the lines are also changing their their direction. So as you can see, if I'm here, now I can match it much easier. So I'm gonna take the red, the first red one, and I'm gonna match it with this line here. I'm gonna take the second one, and I'm gonna match it here. I'm gonna take the blue one. No, just try to make it as vertical as possible and uh, now i'm gonna match also this one with my perspective with the vertical line now i'm gonna take the green one and try to match it also and the other green And now we have a winner. I'm gonna save my file. So right now we have the perspectives which is matched with our camera view. So what we need to do next is to create a camera from this view. So for that, I'm just gonna use the magic button here. So let's click on create Cor Corona camera. I did that. Now we have a camera in this view. I go on the top view, you can see the camera, which is going in that direction. If I go back, it's there. I don't see that the camera is actually correct. Let me see, select the camera target. Yeah, something happened in the moment that I created the camera, but uh, we can fix all of that. Maybe it's a problem of vertical, not the vertical, maybe the horizontal one. No, it's not. So yeah, what I'm going to do, I'm just gonna select the uh, camera target here and I'm just gonna move it a little bit more to the right just until I have the, these lines here matching the perspective. See, they're all going in the same direction. Too bad I don't have here one in the middle to match it exactly with the floor, but it doesn't matter. For now, I think it's it's quite okay so what I'm going to do now I'm gonna create a box only for the floor so I'm gonna go and yeah it's almost perfect I'm gonna go here and put a negative dimension now I'm gonna create another box here for this wall To see also the image behind you can use alt x this way you can uh, ghost the uh, the box okay then we're gonna make another one in here for this wall and then i'm gonna make another one here for this part one for the pool for the ceiling I'm just gonna copy this here and as you can see it's going a little bit more on the left side so I need to extend that I'm gonna apply an editable poly into this go on the top and then move everything a little bit more to the left I'm gonna extend all of this further just to be sure 
and now we have a 3D model. Okay, maybe you're saying, okay, but these are just some boxes. How is this going to look the same as the rest? So what we need to do now is to see exactly what's the height of our camera. So for that, I'm just gonna use a rectangle for now and I'm gonna match just to check the height. So in millimeters, we have 380 millimeters, 18 millimeters, so it's not enough. Normally, I think we need to have around 160 or, uh, or even more. I don't know exactly how much, so I'm just guessing right now. What I'm going to do, I'm gonna select this Alt X, this Alt X, this Alt X, so I can see my, uh, my image behind. So with Shift G, I can hide or unhide the, the geometry. I'm just gonna hide everything for now. And uh, yeah, let's see how big this should be. So I'm guessing that the height here here is maybe around three meters but uh, let's have a look in the yeah so as you can see here this is the table it's around 70 another 70 another 70 so this is yeah around 2.5 meters I think uh, it has if I think about it let's see another image here maybe we have a person in one of the images Here is just uh, amazing, beautiful. I just love uh, this uh, guy's work, this office, because it's not him doing all of this, as you can probably know. Oh, okay, we have also here a plan with the whole thing. Yeah, we can't see that it's not a plan of the building. Let's see the next one, maybe. Yeah, he doesn't have a plan of the building. Oh, okay, so this is the our main entrance, as you can see. You go through here on the stairs and then you make a right and I guess you go to or maybe no no that's correct and that's the water oh okay so this is our area where we go, which we are going to make so this is nice to have and to see exactly how it's looking so <laughs> there is a bird here these two are the same ones so what we have we have the stone wall and then we have the wood slates the, they are working as a sunshade and then we have another wall okay so the ceiling is coming in this direction and then it's making a left so it's coming and probably it's a left until here then that just goes out yeah oh this is nice we had a video in the beginning let me see here oh okay So if she's 180 plus 180, is she going in two times? Hmm. Possible. So it's probably 3.5 meters. Okay, I'm just gonna say that here there are three three meters, just to be sure. So this door is three meters tall. So with Shift G, I'm gonna unhide everything. So what we need to do to be sure, left. So what I said was the fact that my camera is on 320 millimeters. So I'm just gonna scale everything to have uh, 160. So this means that I need to scale everything. No, it's 325, 5. And we have 1600. So I need to scale everything five times. So how, how am I gonna do that? I'm gonna select all everything. I'm gonna group it for now. I'm gonna go here to more scale or rescale world units. And I'm gonna use five here and let's see. Yeah, 1.574. Oh yeah, it's an approximation. It's almost 1.6. So it's everything good right now. Okay, if I go back to my perspective, Alt B, it should be exactly the same. It's not, unfortunately. I'm gonna ungroup group everything i'm gonna go to select my camera target this is the problem i'm just gonna move it only on the x axis try to match this here and i think it's fine i think it's fine okay now let's start uh, doing our uh, our scene let's model the floor the wall ceiling and so on so the first thing that i'm going to do i'm gonna open my layer tab which is here you can just go here and find it as a layer is the first one in my case because I already have it open 
I'm gonna create some layers. So the first one that we're gonna create is the floor. I'm gonna create another one called ceiling. I'm gonna create another one called walls. What else we do we need? Another one called pool. Drag it outside of the box. Okay, what else do we need? I'm gonna create another one cameras and another one lights. I'm gonna take it out and now we're gonna start working on the scene. So because I already have this file, so I know that this is my floor. I'm gonna go into floor, add here my floor for now. I'm gonna add an editable poly to this. Alt 1. With Alt 1, I'm just gonna add here another, another edge. And I'm gonna go to the top, select my polygon, and with Shift pushed, I'm just gonna move this here. Then I'm gonna do the Alt text to see my floor much better. I'm gonna select all of this. How was that picture? Let me see. So this is the entrance. It was ah, so it's our wall, and then we have the wood slats, and then we have another small bit of the wall, and these two are going together. So the water is moving forward from all these wood slats with all these wood slats. So let's see. That's the wood. Then the wood slats. They are kind of similar to this, and then we have another piece of uh, wood the wall and then that's it the wall is the water was coming till the end i think and then we have another wall here okay that's all enough for now so this is our wall this needs to go to walls i'm gonna convert also the to this to an editable poly with the shift with the control shift i'm just gonna make a copy of this as the same element now I'm gonna select my vertices here and move them here and also these ones and move them here. Okay, I just created my wall for now. We have the floor. This is moving forward and this is moving here somewhere. And we have also another the other wall. This is going to be the our our pool. I'm gonna convert this also to an editable poly. And then move it here. Okay, this is looking good. And now let's create the actually the floor. I don't like this because it's not going till the end. I just need it until here. Just yeah, it's looking good. For now and then I'm gonna use this to create my actually my floor so using a line I'm gonna go to the top view with the 2.5 selection and I'm gonna trace all of this close the spline I'm gonna move all of this to the floor and I'm gonna go to the floor generator if you don't know what floor generator is, so uh, yeah, it's a it's a plugin or a script that it creates any type of floors. It's from CG Source. This is it. Uh, the full version is costing 29 euros. To be honest, you don't really need it. Only if you want to have also the herringbone chevron, the basket wave, and the hexagon. I'm using most of the time only the standard. For the rest, if I really need it, I can use uh, some just an array modifier or something like that. The free version has only the only the standard running bone that you can. Create create and you need to you can also download the multi textures from them but you don't really need it because uh, also corona has a multi texture map okay this is not a paid version so they didn't pay me to do all of this but uh, yeah if you guys want it you think you can just take it it's free this is our floor generator i don't want to have any height and any bevel so i just want uh, this part i'm curious so yeah i need to match the the width of these wood slats to do that, I yeah, will just go here and create more and more until I'm gonna get closer to the ones that I have in the picture. Probably they are something similar to this. So 238 millimeters, let's have 200. For sure it's a round number. Yeah, this looks uh, quite fine already. I'm just gonna go to the top and select both of them. And for the top one, I'm just gonna apply a shell fire. 
and this shell modifier I just want to have it also only on the inner amount so I'm gonna guess that these are thick as two centimeters or 20 millimeters I'll make it and now I will just move the one that I have under the vertices from above I'm just gonna move all of them under this floor that I just created with the floor generator as you can see so this is our floor oh uh, yeah it has a gap here I don't know how big but uh, it's looking good I will also apply a chamfer to this any surface needs to have a chamfer apply the chamfer the problem with the chamfer right now is that is smoothing the entire object so you need to go here and smooth only the chamfers quite big so I will go back in here and I will just make it three millimeters maybe the number of segments I'm just gonna make them zero because so uh, yeah when you have a piece of wood you just try to cut the, the edges the, the sharp edges on 45 degrees much easier or you can use a piece of uh, sandpaper just to make them a little bit more round so if you want to have it round then you need to add more segments in here so we had one I can add two maximum three and now you have like two round beautiful edges or you can make them at 45 degrees and you have zero here and then you can add another chain modifier smaller like 0 0.02 which is not enough maybe like this and uh, yeah you also you smooth the chamfer that you had before uh, this one is also coming with a uh, a smooth that you can uh, take out by smooth chamfers only okay so we have the floor now which is uh, looking very nice I think already let's see and now let's move forward so let's also create the door here for the door we are gonna use exactly the same uh, floor that we made earlier so I'm just gonna copy this here I'm just gonna make a copy I'm gonna rotate all of these to 90 degrees I'm gonna go higher with all of this and add the floor on top of this and now i'm just gonna go back to my original line and start uh, deleting some stuff from here i'm just gonna move this with here because this is my ceiling this is my door so yeah this should be fine for now i guess Let's see and we have the door i'm gonna move my pivot directly only problem is that you can see the wood planks are good or no horizontal and we need to change them to vertical so I'm gonna go back to my floor generator and here I'm just gonna tell to my floor generator that I want to rotate everything uh, 90 degrees and uh, we can do that from the direction which is here so I'm just gonna have here 90 and it's done let's go and see okay it's all getting there what next do we need to do uh, let's make also this ceiling part just gonna select it uh, I don't know if I put everything in the right layers. Let me check. This is on the floor. This should be on the ceiling. I'm just gonna go there and I'm gonna start uh, making some uh, small adjustments to, to this. So as you can see the ceiling is going in that direction till here but then it's moving. It's going forward. Here I don't understand exactly how they are touching these two but probably it's a shadow gap here above the uh, these stones. So for now I'm just gonna uh, extend my uh, ceiling above this uh, wall also so I'm gonna go with selecting the vertices on this area and move all of them here then these ones can go until here here without one I will just add another edge then this edge this face and with the shift click and uh, with the left mouse button i'm just gonna extend that because here is the interior this can go even further it doesn't matter we're not going to see what's happening in that area then in this area which is probably going a little bit more like this and i'm also going to extend my wall a little bit here and also this part here which is underneath i'm also going to extend this one here to be sure uh, but right now because okay so let's see what we can do next yeah next we can create these uh, sun shades oh no wait we said that we're going to oh yeah we had another wall in here that it was coming from uh, 
So what I'm going to do, I'm with Ctrl Shift, just make a copy of all of this, move it here, then with one, just gonna extend everything here and create also the other wall. If you remember here, there is what it was also another piece of wall, which is this one. So this is just going like this on the L shape. So it's not even that long, so it's probably like this. Yeah, it doesn't matter, we're not going to see all of this, but I just want to create it for the light to bounce uh, well in this area. Okay, that is the ceiling. This wall is a little bit too high. And I see a strange intersection in here. Just want to fix that for now. Now let's start creating the rest of the stuff. So as you can see here, we have the, yeah, some concrete or white concrete, I, I don't know exactly what, where these wood slats are sitting on, uh, these sunshades actually. Okay, so we have the floor done. As you can see, there is one thing that I would like to check and I forgot about it, is to go to the, my camera and check the horizon line in here. As you can see, here the horizon line is lower than the one that we have in the camera. So I need to adjust that to make everything in the same place. I don't know if now if I'm looking at this image, I don't know if this actually goes exactly the same place. It's quite hard to match my perspective with uh, the one from the picture because it's just a matter of a couple of uh, millimeters. Some, sometimes it's quite hard to match that. But I'm just gonna go to select my camera target and I will try to move this lower. And as you can see now we have some differences here. But uh, yeah, I'll just try to arrange everything. So in this way, everything is going to be closer to what I need to do. So I'm just gonna move this here, these vertices. I'm gonna try to select also the plane that, the box that it's underneath. Match also that with my current, ah, but it's, uh, it's totally fine because it was already made, it was made bigger than this. Okay, this looks fine. What else do I need to match is my, the height of my door. First, we need to match the height of this wall with the one that we have here. So now we know the hill height of the wall. And now I'm gonna match the ceiling. Okay, now it's all correct. And another thing that I need to do is the door to make it a little bit taller. It doesn't need to be exactly as big as the wall because actually you have a gap here. So in reality, you need to have a gap so you can actually open the door because nothing is perfect in reality. So yeah, sometimes you just need to leave some small gaps. Not sometimes, always you need to leave a small gap in there. Let me check this chamfer. Oh yeah, it looks fine, but it's here, unfortunately, as you can see, we have a small wood slat. So the best way will be to, or to delete that or to move everything here so it's just going to disappear yeah this is good so now we're gonna have a, a gap also on the right side so to be sure that we're not going to see too much of that i will just uh, oh, but my door is not long enough okay i'll just do this for now leaving a small gap in there. Okay, now as you can see this wall, and these two are getting intersected here. I'm just gonna fix this, convert this to a double poly, select the vertices, go on top with the 3D on. Now it's fine, I'm gonna extend this a little bit higher okay this looks cool okay this is nice and let's create also the pool i'm just gonna collapse everything because i don't want to go back to my uh, original uh, shape okay so if this is correct and this is my uh, the water is gonna be a little bit lower than the, my deck that's for sure because they can't be on the same height so i will just select my top plane and move everything under here you can even go minus three okay so what i'm going to do i'm gonna use my top plane as the water plane so i'm gonna detach that and say water uh, water surface okay so now we have our object 
I'm going to delete my other object, which is underneath, and I'm going to make with shift and left click a copy of this. And I'll say uh, pool, I will call this pool walls. And I will go to the camera, I will just extend this a little bit more. So, yeah, for now, this is so this is the water surface. I'm gonna hide this for now. Now this is my pool. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna go to the top and select my uh, these two edges and connect them with two lines. And here I'm just gonna move them around here, I think. Yeah, this is fine. I'll click OK. Now I'm gonna get the middle one and with the shift on, I'm just gonna create the depth of my pool or whatever this thing is. And now this looks good. I need to extend my wall which goes underneath and here it's missing a small part of the wall so i just created an edge there let's see oh, okay it's fine i'm just gonna move the edge a little bit higher and then this i'm just gonna extend it just to be sure that it's uh, not touching but at least it's close to uh, also leave a small gap in here okay what else we are missing here so we have the pool well, of course we are missing the other side of the pool that we don't see in the camera but it's there so it's better to close it otherwise the, some light is gonna come in through here so to do that i'm gonna isolate the pool i will just use the shell for now now it's looking good and i will apply an editable poly here i will just select all of this i'll extend it for a bit now by selecting two opposite polygons with a bridge i can create the missing uh, surface so okay we have the pool for now we have the water let's create the wood slats uh, which are these shades yeah i'm just gonna create one for the right side or the left side and i'm gonna use it also on both sides as you can see the ones on the left side are taller than the ones on the right side but that's not a problem so let me see this small part here okay so this needs to go more to the right I'll convert also this to an editable poly and I'm gonna extend everything a little bit on the inside here it's gonna be the wall and then we need a box also for the interior of, of all of this I don't know how big that but that's only for yeah creating uh, something which is on the other side which we don't know exactly how it's looking or we don't care actually because it's not part of this tutorial so I'm just gonna create fast a box here. I'm gonna extrude this. I'm gonna apply an editable poly to all of this. And here there is a small gap and I just want to know exactly how tall is this wall. And so probably it's, yeah, it's something like this, I guess. And also this wall needs to go a little bit backwards until here oh so yeah we have the room now i think let me see with the floor yeah so we need to create another piece there but it's uh, these two they don't they're not touching each other so they should yeah anyway for now it's fine Make a copy of this should go to the pool this also should go to the pool and what else we have in here the camera should go to the camera this is floor should go to the floor this uh, rectangle oh, I just 
just use this for to measure some stuff in here. Okay, I'm just gonna save the file for now. Yeah, let's start creating this wood slat. I'm gonna make one. Just gonna approximate the width. I don't know how big it should be. Uh, actually, the length needs to be approximated. I think it's around five centimeters, so it should be, or maybe seven. I don't know for sure. But uh, yeah, this is enough for now. I'm just gonna extrude this until here. I'm just gonna leave two couple of centimeters on the top part and also on the bottom so to do that i'm just gonna select this apply an editable poly i'm gonna move all of this up and then using the y here i'm gonna go with minus 30 which is three centimeters and up 30 so three and three centimeters what else do i need to do here i need to create this so uh, nice detail which is a metal a cylinder that it's the wood slat is pivoting around that but yeah as you can see if i go here because that's mine so this should be in the middle because it's always pivoting in the middle so this is how i can determine the length of my um, of my object so i'm just gonna get the circle for now i'm gonna try to yeah i should create another layer only for this i will call the um, sun visor okay okay I'm gonna isolate this, I'm gonna create a circle, the radius, I don't know, maybe 10, let's say, move, move that in the middle, truth, this one should go on the bottom. My ceiling and my floor, and now I'm gonna extend this for a bit, almost perfect, editable poly, oh. editable poly, like this and move everything here now because this is my wood shade i'm just gonna move it here so now i can determine how big is my object so to be sure that i'm doing everything correctly i'm gonna apply a symmetry and i'm gonna use this symmetry to calculate the width of my wood slat so now i'm quite sure that this is perfect so now i'm gonna go to view without one i'm gonna apply another edge in here and another one like this maybe and i'll do exactly the same on the bottom one here and another one around here and now select the polygon select only this part and now i'm gonna extrude all of this and i'll go here on local normals so it's gonna extrude on the normal of the object and expand all of this for five ten, seven millimeters and now i have my it's not perfect but it's hard to match exactly the height because we're talking here about a couple of millimeters so but uh, i think this is fine for now i'm gonna isolate all of this with alt b i'm gonna use a customized color for now because i don't want to see all of that all the time so i have it here so i'm gonna apply a material id for this for later I'm gonna yeah use material ID 2. I'm gonna copy this for this. I'm gonna use paste material ID 1. So this means that when I create my materials, I'm gonna create material that has multi sub object. And in here, the first one is going to be the wood, and the second one is going to be the metal. Because I want to merge these two objects together, so I can use an array to create the rest of the wood uh, shades. So for now this is looking very nice i'm gonna apply a chamfer this very small one one millimeter maybe and i'm gonna leave it with the smooth the entire object because metals they are not the moment that they are created they are not perfectly straight here so it has like a roundness they always have that this is why many people when they are creating the metal surfaces they don't know this and they are all looking quite straight but in reality they are not like that because the metal is always expanding and contracting depending on the temperature that you have in that place so for this i'm also gonna apply a chamfer 
toughness so i'm gonna use around two millimeters here the segment zero and then actually i have even three and then i apply and i'm using only smooth chamfers only so then i'm going to apply another one I could just copy paste the first one that i had and this one i'm gonna use less chamfer so around one let's say maybe even less 0.5 yeah this is nice and of course i need to have also um, uvv on all of this i'm gonna use the uv map on box and real world map scale i made a tutorial already about real world map size i'm gonna leave a link on the top part of this video and now i'm gonna collapse everything and attach these two objects together the moment that i did that they both got the same material but in the moment that i'm gonna apply this material with two different materials yeah they're gonna change you're going to to see when in the second part when I'm when I'm making the materials and now I need to use the pivot to be sure that it's on the right place perfect okay and now I'll go on the top here camera oh yeah use the file apply okay and now I'm just gonna move this further away like here let me check with the wall how close is it because this needs to have enough space so it can rotate Okay, I'll just leave it like this and now I'm going to apply the array. So this is my array. Let's add some more. Yeah, it needs to go till there. So I'm going to add the gap should be smaller it's probably more or less like this and now i can just go to my original element and just rotate that one but that's not a problem so i'm just gonna rotate my original one like this and create a bigger space in between them because actually the spacing if i go to back here and yeah, this is my objects so the spacing is from here till here so let's see how is that working so let's calculate this let's see how big it is so 408 so i'm gonna go back to my original element rotate this let's say 90 degrees and now i'm just gonna go to my array and put here 108 and let's see if it's correct it's not i'm just going to make a line here with 408 just to see the distance between them and i'm gonna match my array with that so it's around this it doesn't need to be perfect you just need to have them there is not the purpose of this uh, this lesson so we have the wood slats also in there of course they have a little bit more of details in here i we can create all of that without any problem i'm gonna take out of this for now because oh uh, yeah we need to create a frame where all these wood slats are actually uh, sitting in so i'm gonna select this and go here and apply an editable spline and here I will just go this, this is all fine. And this is the second part that I didn't adjust the height of the wall. As you can see, but I will just do it right now. I adjusted only the front part. Okay, this is now correct. And to this line that I just created here, I'm just gonna move it in the middle and I will apply a sweep. And this sweep needs to be a channel like this so in this way we know that our pivot it's sitting in a channel now the channel is going on the other direction so i can fix that by doing this and uh, yeah you can check here where the channel needs to be so now i will just use the pivot the line pivot on the right side here and i can extend it for a bit here and now we have a nice channel I don't know yeah the channel is much wider than actually the pivot that we need so i'm just gonna make this smaller also the height of it it's quite big so i'll also make this a little bit smaller like this and of course i'm going to apply a chamfer to all of this very small one one millimeter probably is enough 
and I will just leave it smooth as an entire object. So it's going to create that beautiful effect for the metals. Okay, so this is uh, looking good for now. Behind there is a glass and a room, I guess. So we also need to create uh, just a box behind it with a glass. Uh, we don't, we're not going to see the frame, so I'm not gonna uh, work on that for now because it doesn't make any sense. But what I'm going to do for now, I'm just gonna select both and with the shift and the left click, I'll just copy everything on the other side. As a copy, not as an instance, because the height, as I said, on here is bigger than the one on the right side. So for now, let me see where these things are. I, they need to be here somewhere. I'm just gonna select all of these. Yeah, as you can see, the height is quite big, but that's not a problem. I'm gonna extend this here, which is the frame. And then on my object and the ray, I'm just gonna extend my wood slats. Let's extend the frame. This is okay, it can go here. And now, um, because the ray is going in that direction, I'm just gonna move this for now here. Now with, on the Y, because it was 408, I'll put 204. So I have enough space, maybe even more 205. And then I will extend the array of this uh, object till the end. For now, let's see how it's looking. Yeah, I think it's looking nice. The only thing is that, uh, from what I remember, Shift G you can hide. So they are all rotated in this direction. So these ones are kind of perpendicular to this to the pool, and these ones are rotated in this direction towards us. So you can actually see a little bit of the inside, some furniture in here and whatever. And also behind there is a frame. Uh, the frame is going till here, and then we have a beam behind this. So yeah, we need to create that beam and I don't see the frame in here, but should be there. Maybe it's in the same level as the, this concrete. I guess it's a concrete. So yeah, with Shift G, I'm just gonna, for now, hide all of this. Just take my element, rotate that like this and use the array. It's even more, I think. The problem is that the distance is not 408, so I need to create a rectangle all over again to, to fix that. Eight, and uh, yeah, I will just adjust this from the spacing here. If I use the total dimension, I have here 408. No, I don't, do I need to do? Okay, this is okay for now. Let me check on the view. It looks like they are more on this side than on the other side. So this I don't really like. I don't know if they are actually bigger. If I select all of them and you yeah, know it's looking good. It's possible that these uh, wood slats are actually wider than the ones on the right side. So yeah, I don't know that for sure, but uh, this is how they are actually looking right now from what I see. Yeah, anyway, yeah, as I said, having only one picture and creating a 3D model out of it, it's quite impossible to have everything perfectly without having any measurements, like real measurements. So you know what's happening in there, but yeah, for, for now, for this lesson, I will just leave everything as it is and I will just move forward with the rest of the things that we need to do. Okay, anyway, doesn't matter. I'll just move it right now fixing everything while I'm working. I guess it's like this. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to see all of that. I'm just gonna extend this array for now. This go, well, can go to here. Yeah, I don't care about this part, so I will just leave it as it is. Oh yeah, we said that we have the that beam behind all of this. So I'm just gonna create that. Just go to the top, create here a beam, convert to editable spline, extend it to here, and make it less wide, make all of them corner, hide all of this, and I'm going, up, going to apply an extrude. All of this, this, so now I have the beam behind, which is perfect. So what else do I need to do here? I need to create that window. Yeah, there is a frame and a window here, so I'm gonna make a 
start from here going here. frame being a very long frame maybe it's better to have it bigger here 50 70 this should be fine I just want to move this in more in the middle of the beam or even like this is not so bad and now I just need to create a glass inside so I will do exactly the same move this in the middle of the frame and use this a shell. I'll go to two, four millimeters for such a wide. Uh, the sweep for the frame is on, on channel, it needs to be on the bar. So I'll make this 100. To be fine, I'm gonna apply a chamfer as usual. Chamfer is the most important uh, thing for creating more realism to your, to your objects, to give them more realism. Okay, I'm gonna move all of these two walls even though i could have another f another f layer only for this and um yeah this is it i think uh, we need to create also this small thing here with the water how am i gonna do that i'm gonna use i'm gonna create some edges in here just to create that object in there and um, just need a small gap in here so we have the object we have the gap from where the water is coming so that should be fine for now i think maybe i can create a small angle here and also apply a sweep to this this sweep is going to be very very small i mean it can be deep probably needs to stick out a little bit and I was also by a chamfer to this very small 1.5 maybe and yeah the water is gonna come out through here I don't really care what's happening on the other side but for now I'll just extend all of this in there and edit double poly okay so this is our 3d model for now you can see it's missing here we have a handle for the door so I'm going to create so that just go with the auto grid try to create here a small object and select the door and the object alt B and now I'm just gonna rotate this for 90 degrees on the Z axis try to move this more in the middle here yes it's around here go on the top how big it is 100 is it enough to put your hand underneath? Let's make it 80. I'll just have it here like this. And um, I will apply a sweep. This sweep is going to be here like zero. I don't know if it's actually like this or not. 60, let's make it 40. This part, um, I will apply multiple spline. Delete for now. Now, yeah, it's, I guess it's like this. Apply a chamfer as usual, one. And let's see let me see if i can change the color of all of this so we can see it better so yeah as you can see it's matching uh, the picture more or less we have some small things happening here in the back but yeah i can't know exactly how those things are working because i don't have any measurements there so i don't understand the detail so i'm um, for now yeah this is the 3d model as you can see what i'm going to do i'm gonna apply a white material to everything just to add some, so I can add some lights. I'm gonna use the NVIDIA GPU Fast Preview and uh, I'm gonna use the material override. I'm gonna apply a Corona physical material and to this Corona physical material, I'm gonna drag it here as an instance and I'm just gonna make it a little bit brighter. Okay, and uh, for now I'm gonna add a Corona Sun. Take out the auto grid. Okay, okay, let's add also a Corona Sky in here. Let me add the Corona Sky here. Let me change this to only two viewport. Okay, it's everything quite bright right now. Let's 
So yeah, we're trying to match the picture that we got. So as you can see, yeah, it's not looking bad at all. So in the second part, um, for those that are on my Patreon and they are following me there the night, for example, uh, they will receive this 3D model for free. I mean, for free, they are paying for it. So in the second part, you can use this 3D model to create the, the materials for this scene. And we're gonna try to match it as close as possible to the original picture. So yeah, this is the 3D model that we made and this is the original picture. Yeah, maybe the sun can move. So I'm gonna try to match as much as possible the sun position in the room and the space. I think it's uh, more or less like this. But probably we have a, quite a big gap in here which you don't see here. But yeah, there is another room behind all of this or maybe there is something else. I don't know if this is the main entrance, but it's not. Because you can you need to enter here to the back. So this is actually the house. I think you enter to the through inside the house. So yeah, this is the lesson of today. I hope you guys liked it. For the second part and for my patrons, uh, they are going to receive also the 3D model and the textures depending on the tier that you are following. So yeah, please don't forget to subscribe, to like this, uh, this video if you find it useful and see you in the next one. Bye.